Crypto hasn't seen a week like this in nearly nine months. Bitcoin surges past 20K, erasing post-FTX losses. The price of Bitcoin has jumped more than 17% in the last seven days. Since the run-up back in May 2020 from $6,000, to May 2021, all the way to $59,000, and then most recently from August 2021, from 44,000, all the way up to the all-time high of 65,000. For the first time this week, the Bitcoin Strength Index indicator has flipped bullish with the breach of the 20K price point. We explored this indicator and how it works early this week, which you can check out by clicking on the link above. Also taking a look at the Fear and Greed Index, which is a tool that shows us the overall sentiment about the crypto markets. It is still slightly on the fear side at 46, which anything over 50 would tip us from fear to greed. Last week, we were at 25, which is extreme fear. In the previous month, a 31, which was moderate fear. So what does this all tell us? That the market is emotionally volatile, which ultimately causes crazy price volatility. Why is the market rocking and rolling? Savage Fan Henrik asks a valid question. Did the Fed announce QE and rate cuts? Well, not exactly. Consumer prices fell 0.1% in December, in line with expectations from economists. So inflation came in at 6.5%. And as we've been discussing on the channel, two things. One, the Fed's target inflation rate is 2%. And two, the Fed is fed up with the market overreacting with benign news, like inflation decreasing by 0.1% from the last CPI report. Although the Fed has been adamant and as clear as an opaque entity can be, their firm message to the market has been their firm stance to douse and extinguish any fires the market lights and tries to perpetuate throughout the equity and crypto markets. Yet, there are so many conflicting headlines and predictions. So let's explore them together, as well as other future dates we need to stay mindful of as crypto investors. Hello, I'm Crypto Casey, and welcome to another episode of Crypto This Week. Let's take a look at the global news stories and the state of the current macro environment. Please check out our sponsors, Unstoppable Domains, iTrust Capital, and HeatBit. Secure a Web3 domain like Casey.Wallet or Casey.Bitcoin for your name, personal brand, business brand, or business idea with Unstoppable Domains. Invest in and trade cryptocurrencies tax-free with an individual retirement account or IRA with iTrust Capital. And safely, passively invest in Bitcoin while warming your home or office with HeatBit, a space heater that is also an easy-to-use Bitcoin mining rig. More on them in a bit. So make sure to scroll down and use the links below to access the correct and official sites, as well as redeem any special offers they have for us. Nice. Now let's explore arguments for and against this being just a bear market rally, a sucker's rally, a bull trap, versus potentially being the start of a new market cycle, ushering in the next bull run. As we've discussed on the channel for several months now, the market won't turn bullish again until the Fed starts decreasing interest rates and fires up QE, quantitative easing, aka the money printer. And they are hellbent on not doing that until inflation drops to their 2% target, or if they are forced to reverse course before that happens due to something big in the economy breaking. So all eyes are on the Fed when it comes to market behavior. And there are a lot of conflicting predictions about what the Fed may do about interest rates at the next FOMC or Federal Open Market Committee meeting, February 1st, 2023. So basically one of four things can happen. One, they hike at the same rate they did last month, which was 0.5%. Two, they hike at a higher rate, like 0.75% or even 1%. Three, they do not hike at all. Or four, they decrease interest rates by a certain percentage. In this past Thursday, Federal Reserve Bank of Philadelphia leader Patrick Harker is ready to downshift to 25 basis point or 0.25% interest rate hikes. I expect that we will raise rates a few more times this year, though to my mind, the days of us raising them 75 basis points at a time have surely passed. Harker said in a speech to a local group in Malvern, Philadelphia, in my view, hikes of 25 basis points will be appropriate going forward. In the rearview mirror, I expect are the eye-popping inflation readings of 2022, the official said. He said core inflation should be around 3.5% this year. Harker added, the Fed should reach its inflation goal in 2025. Hmm. Bullish on the downshift in rate hikes next month. However, bearish on this prediction of not reaching their 2% inflation target until 2025, which implies no sign of reversal in monetary policy by decreasing rates and turning on the money printer until then. However, we must keep in mind that Harker, financial news media, and pretty much everyone making predictions about the short-term and long-term state of the markets are making wild guesses because at the end of the day, no one knows what the future holds. As we explored in this video, you can check out by clicking on the link above, Founder and CEO of hedge fund ARK Invest, Kathy Wood, made an optimistic prediction that we may reach the Fed's 2% target inflation rate sometime this year in 2023. And in last week's episode of Crypto This Week, we explored how the Fed delivered a message to the stock market, big rallies will prolong pain. And this week, 
Defiant bulls stand up to Fed with trillion dollar stock rally. Financial conditions at easier levels than prior to March hike. Fed will be forced to remain hawkish, limiting rallies. And I'd say that Bitcoin up 23%, Ethereum up 20%, Cardano up 26%, all over the course of a week is a pretty substantial rally off of a mere 0.1% decrease in inflation, that is 6.5%, more than triple the Fed's 2% target. Fed Chair Papa Powell ain't happy and ain't gonna be happy if this continues to happen when it gets closer to February 1st. When in my opinion, my random wild guess, if you will, is that he's going to bring down the hammer a bit and hike to either 0.5% again, or less likely a 0.75% hike as a power play to try and cool down the markets. However, another thing we must consider is yes, markets rallying in anticipation of a more dovish Fed, dovish meaning loosening monetary policy versus tightening, which they have been doing over the past several months. Rallies caused by that are problematic to policymakers. But what if some financial conditions have eased because some risks have declined, like China reopening from their zero COVID policies, inflation cooling off, and other legitimate reasons. Then hopefully, if the Fed recognizes that and can put their egos aside, we may see a 0.25% rate hike or potentially no hike. More likely than not, my prediction is we stay at the 0.5% rate hike. Let me know what you think the Fed will do with regard to interest rates in the comments below. Cool. Either way, there have been so many changes to the macroeconomic environment since the pandemic. And that, coupled with several different disruptive, innovative technologies maturing and about to experience exponential growth, like AI and blockchain technology, that a fresh new look and approach needs to be taken as long-term investors. So over the next several months and years, we will explore new strategies together, including new ideas for generating passive income, which I came across something that may be worth checking out called HeatBit, the first electric space heater that mines Bitcoin quietly. It can run up to 14 trillion hash calculations per second and generates heat as a result, while using the same watts of heat and electric power as regular heaters. Unlike traditional mining hardware that requires a lot of technical experience, HeatBit is a plug and play solution that anyone can use to support the Bitcoin network with an easy to use mobile app that manages the heater and mined Bitcoin. It was built under US and Canadian software and hardware standards. So even in the unlikely event of it overheating or if a blanket was tossed over it, it will automatically turn off and will not catch fire. So we can warm up to 500 square feet of our homes faster than oil filled heaters, halogen heaters, and other types of convection heaters and generate some passive income without using any additional energy or additional cost to us. Even at current difficulty mining rates, HeatBit generates about $1 worth of Bitcoin per day. And even though we've had this nice rally, at prices still far below all time highs, consider what passively mined Bitcoin today could be worth if we get back to there and beyond. The physical design is stylish with three different colors to choose from, orange and black, pure white, and wooden. If you scroll down and use the link below, you can get a heat bit at a 5% discount. So be sure to scroll down and check it out. Sweet. Next, let's talk a little bit about this insane AI revolution that is currently upon us and wrap up with some seemingly bullish news about US crypto regulations. I'm working on a video about the good, bad, and the ugly of AI with regard to blockchain technology and cryptocurrencies. So stay tuned for that. In the meantime, as crypto investors, we need to be mindful of what AI is currently capable of doing so we can keep our investments safe from scammers. AI is here and it's making movies. NVIDIA broadcast eye contact feature can convincingly deep fake your gaze. AI is becoming more conversational and Microsoft's AI called Volley needs three seconds to imitate anyone's voice. So what does this all mean? It means that scammers will basically be able to download videos of popular influencers in the space like Elon Musk, Kathy Wood, Meet Kevin, BitBoy, Guy at Coin Bureau, myself, and pretty much anyone and use the images, audio, and chatbots to make and post convincing videos of us, have convincing conversations between an AI version of us with other people, all to try and trick you into sending them money, crypto, your private keys, seed phrases, login credentials, passwords, etc. All to steal from you. They will use AI to direct message you on social media, email you, have video chats with you, post videos, and similar, all about some special investment fund that guarantees profits that they only reserve for specially selected people, etc., etc. And it's all 100% a scam. They will also pretend to offer services to recover your funds or your crypto or help you set up wallets and basically anything else where they will try to steal from you. So we need to watch out and be more vigilant than ever. So remember, never ever send your crypto, money, private keys, login credentials to anyone you have never personally and physically met who is offering to invest it for you or help you with your wallet, private keys, or similar. Scammers will also use AI to create malicious code to infect your computer, cell phone, and similar. They will use it to create fake websites and fake exchanges to try to get you to submit information through. So be sure you are double and triple checking 
all the websites and links you are accessing. All the links to my only social media accounts are listed below. And please remember that I never ever direct message you on any of them to avoid confusion due to so many scammers impersonating me out there. And all the links to the correct and official crypto exchanges, products and services with special offers for our community are listed below as well. It's getting crazy out there, but if we follow these simple rules of never ever ever sending money or crypto to me, scammers pretending to be me or anyone else who asks you to send crypto to either them or direct you to some website to send it to, for either investing or some sort of help, don't do it. It's all absolutely 100% fake and scams. All right, we will probably still have to beat that dead horse over the year, so be sure to spread the warning to all of your friends and family so we can all be mindful of what's going on and protect ourselves. Next, let's wrap up with some hopefully bullish news about crypto regulations. Congress is creating a new subcommittee on Bitcoin and digital assets led by representatives French Hill and Warren Davidson. Representative Davidson recently introduced the Keep Your Coins Act with a goal to protect Bitcoin use in the United States. Check out this video. The one takeaway from this is it would be incredibly foolish to limit self-custody. If you look at, um, you know, both both um, Secretary Mnuchin and Secretary Yellen, Treasury under both of them started processes to look at limiting self-custody or as they refer to it, self-posted wallets. But the reality is it's your ability to own your own assets. Um, and fundamentally, people are telling you if they don't like self-custody, they don't like freedom, they don't trust you and they want you to depend on someone they can control uh, to control your assets. And when you look at a, a, a space right now that has um, the legal and uh, regulatory chaos going on that we're seeing, not just at FTX, um, why would you want to limit self-custody? And I think we have to, this is our Keep Your Coins Act um, that, I, that I hope we can get across the finish line in short order. And I think the present situation makes that immediacy maybe a more accelerated. Bullish. So if you would like to learn more about how tons of people are losing money from crypto scams and how to avoid them, check out this video. If you would like to finally have that eureka moment about how cryptocurrency wallets, seed phrases, and private keys work, check out this video. And if you would like to get 5% off a heat bit Bitcoin mining space heater, click on the link here. Like and subscribe for more. Be safe out there.